So this video is all about Shelby, the prehensile tailed porcupine, which is the latest Ed's Club, um, Ed's Dye Club design. Now, um, this yarn has been absolutely lovingly and painstakingly um, dyed to a very specific measurement for you to create this absolutely stunning black and white yarn, um, like a humbug, um, just in time for Christmas. And um, Shelby uses the standard form, um, so it's a standard form animal, but it's got um, a very very great and interesting and fun technique to add all of his spikes on to get them all with cream tips. So what you need to do first is make all your body parts. So I've got my um, body here and I've got my head and this kit does also include a length of oatmeal. So you'll find that you've got your skein of oatmeal and you've also got your eye thread for your eyes and your nostril included in your kit too. And this will be the way that we will do um, dye club and in fact all of our clubs going forwards is that you will have your eye threads and your nostril threads always included as well, um, rather than just if they were in an unusual colour. The black ones will be included as standard. So when you finish the head, um, just gather those stitches and sew them up like that, as we normally would. But what you're going to do, just to give his face a little bit more shape, is once you've done that, take your end through, find the centre of your head, and then sew a stitch like that underneath, and back through the center. And that's just gonna create a little bit more shaping for that muzzle. So do one strand like that, and then do another. Like that. It's just gonna give that muzzle a little bit more shape. Then you can fasten off that end of yarn and it will hold that line in place. So sewing the head onto the body. Gather the stitches on the top of your body. And the brilliant thing about this one is it looks really difficult because obviously it's got all those colour changes that the yarn's doing for you, but actually it's a really nice, easy make. So I hope you enjoy it. Um, you are going to be doing a few different stitches with the spikes in terms of um, a half treble, etc. but they're actually not difficult. And once I explain the theory of how to use the yarn to you, I'm sure you'll really enjoy putting his spikes on either this side of Christmas or between Christmas and New Year. It'd be a great project to make. So turn it over to the other side. and sew that into place. So this is sewing up exactly as we would with a standard animal. And it is a pleasure to do so because I don't get to sew up standard animals very often anymore. Um, because we've done so many of the land different land mammals, um, it's quite exciting for me to actually be able to put another standard form land mammal into the collection. And this is one that I've been waiting to do for ages in terms of this black and white yarn, because I knew it was going to be quite a difficult and disciplined dye um, for us to get it to create this gorgeous pattern. So you've got your body and head like that. We're then going to put our limbs in position. So you take your limbs, just put a little bit of stuffing in the bottom and then sew that closed. before you position that in. And sew across the top. So once you've got all four limbs sewn into position, it's time to add the tail as well. And I would recommend doing all of this sewing up before you start to add a spike because we'll be adding those on at the end. Same as we're about to do Selby's ears as well before we do the first round of spikes. So put in the tip on the end of the tail. Then using on the widest part, you can sew that closed in the same way that we do with the limbs. So sew that closed. And that's just to really help you make it a little bit easier when you sew it on. Then flip over on the back. And as ever, I recommend that you sit them down is actually the easiest way of finding a good point to put that tail on. Use your legs as a guide and sew that into place before we start to work any spikes. So you can just over sew on one side, flip it and over sew on the other. I 
Right, so his tail is in position. Then coming back to his head, and this is all before we work some spikes. So we've now got him stuffed, his tail is in. We're gonna put his eyes on and then we're gonna put his ears in before we actually put his spikes on top because that will help you be able to position all of those. Now, in terms of his eyes, what you're gonna do is sew them in the same way that you would with a monster rather than an animal. But that's just going to put that lovely little edge of oatmeal in. So what you need to do, bring your oatmeal yarn up and through. So a length of oatmeal yarn up and through. And we're going to draw a little triangle with our oatmeal. So come up three rounds like that. And then back down. Then through to the other side, using your rounds as a guide. Like that down and up and it's a triangle that you're trying to draw so like that and then back down on the other side so you've drawn two little lines on each side like that then all you need to do is add black yarn into the middle to create those pupils and those nostrils so bring your black yarn up and through and then sew these in the same way that we normally would, but they're going to sit nicely inside that oatmeal triangle that we did to begin with. Across to the other side. And then down for the nostrils, and the nostrils are quite close together. It really does it affect the personality of what you're making on um, small things like nostril positioning. So I've put mine very, very close together in the first instance like that. So I've got one in. I didn't quite get that second one around the yarn in the right way. So I'm going to come back in for a second go. In and down. There we go, so we've got two little nostrils in place. Now time for some ears. Now with the ears, what we're going to do is directly crochet them on. So once you've got your eyes in place, draw a diagonal line up from the eye like that. And we're going to be attaching the ears on in around that position. So you want to be diagonally across from your eye and all you're going to do, follow your pattern, but you're going to be directly crocheting your ear on. So you'll be going in and using three stitches. So I've attached and used one, go on to your next one. and then move on and work the other one in the same way. So once you've got your eyes and your ears in place, it's time for us to work some spikes. And with the spikes, what I've done is I've done them all with the wrong side facing forwards and the right side facing backwards. Now, as a right-handed crocheter, what this means is um, that when you're actually working these spikes, that you'll be slip stitching in with the porcupine looking away from you. So you'll be slip stitching in here at kind of like five o'clock and you'll be going that way round to put them in. And that'll mean that their spikes will face um, right side backwards, wrong side forwards. As a left-handed crocheter, you need to slip stitch in on the other side and you need to go the other way round to get them to do that. And then you'll be getting your right sides backwards. But the thing to really talk about with this yarn is it's a very, very special yarn. Um, it's taken an incredible amount of time to dye this accurately because what we've done is we've actually got all your spacing really even. It's not random. Every skein is the same and the spacing is the same. And this is so that you can create your porcupine spikes with white tips on the spikes. So what you need to do is you need to slip stitch at the point at which you're moving into a black segment, segment of the yarn. So do you see that's at the start of my black segment there? And then chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And what that should do is land you in the middle of this cream section here. So you've come to the middle of your cream section. Then you turn back down that chain. And you're going to slip two, double crochet two, 
and then half treble two. So what you'll have done is by the time you finish your next half treble is you'll have used up the whole of a black section, the whole of a cream section, and you'll be back to the beginning of a black section again. So what you do is you miss a stitch along and you slip stitch in like that. And that's you then ready to repeat that again to get another cream section at the top. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Turn back on yourself and come down. Now, as you can see, what's just happened to me there is I've used up slightly more yarn on my second one than I did on my first one. So let me see. And this is where your tension will come into it slightly. So there we go. So long as you're on your second half treble, you're back on your black section, you're all good. But what you need to be aware of is if when you're turning, you haven't got your cream bit on the tips, you might want to make your spikes one chain longer and do one extra slip stitch on the way down to get that in the right place. So one, two, three, four, five, six seven so turn back down so i've got my cream on my tips and then as you come back down that you're going to use up the whole of your black section with your doubles your half trebles and then you've got yourself back to a black section upon which you start your next spike. And that will be most the most effective way of working all the spikes because they'll all end up with white on the tips, which will have the most impact. So what you're going to do to do that is you're going to go, I would recommend going right the way around the whole of the head like that, and then down the body first and back up the other side. Then you can fill in the gaps in between because that'll set your edge of what you want to work your spikes within. Now, when it comes to the tail, I've worked shorter spikes on the tail. So I've abandoned trying to get the cream onto the end once I go onto the tail and I've done shorter spikes on the tail. Um, I've done, also did an extra few long ones in there as well in order to give more texture. So it really is um, your call once you start adding those spikes on. I've now explained to you how that yarn works. So the most important thing is to try and get the tip of your spike to be in the middle of the cream. So you might want to adjust the amount that you're chaining, either put one more in, one less in, so you turn and work back down that chain when you're around in the centre of the cream. And that's going to give you the most beautifully finished off porcupine.